Hello. Well, it looks like we finally found the hard drive with the hidden footage of our repair of our onboard charger DC-DC converter. So here it is, part two of the iMove repair. Now, first step, if you haven't done so already, is remove the top cover. You do this by finding an eight millimeter socket. Should be pretty easy because it's not a 10 millimeter. And also don't forget, one of these screws is a special Torx head and it's always a good idea to keep the parts in separate plastic bags for um, later assembly. And if you haven't taken the top off previously, there'll be a strong sealant you've got to get through before lifting the lid off. Now the next step is removing the top board. I think this is the AC charger, but the first thing, remove the two AC cables followed by a few screws. There is a plug at the top you have to remove, but also don't forget underneath there is a ribbon cable attached which you have to remove as well. Also, don't forget to record and track everything you disconnect and unplug. Makes life a lot easier in reassembling everything. Because as you can see on this board, there's an awful lot of stuff we've got to disconnect to remove it. So it makes good sense to make sure you label every single thing you remove so you can easily replace it back to the right spot when reassembling the board. But now that everything's unplugged, but before we can remove the mounting hardware, we've got to remove the eddy current suppression ring that's mounted to the side of the housing. And yes, they are a pretty good Aussie band. Now that's done, it's time to remove the mounting hardware of the board itself. Numerous screws around the outside of the board, and again, the eight millimeter socket for the fastener in the middle. And after that, don't forget to remove the board spacer screws as well. Now it's time to remove the board itself. It may seem a little hard to remove it first because it's stuck down to a aluminium cooling plate with heat transfer paste. So you've got to break the vacuum of that paste to get the board out. It can take a little bit of effort, but it comes out pretty easy. And there you have it. Now we have the parts out. Now becomes the fun part, the actual repair itself. First up, you have to get hold of some soft plastic or soft timber scrapers, or in our case, some cuticle sticks and use this to start scraping off that rubberized potting around the vertical circuit board with blown capacitors. Now fortunately this part of the job actually takes a bit of time and you've got to be careful but the potting itself comes out pretty easily. So after about 30 minutes of digging out the potting it's time to start desoldering. So essentially what we did is cut that vertical circuit board into four separate pieces to make it a lot easier to desolder and remove. Now that little vertical circuit board's out Use a cuticle sticks to remove any leftover traces of the potting mix. Now well, that's cleaned out, it's time to solder in two new capacitors. And these are the ones we use to replace the, um, the blend ones on the vertical board. And now those two capacitors are soldered in place, the repair is essentially now complete. All we have to do now is replace the potting mix with a high temperature neutral cure silicon. But before that, just a few continuity checks to make sure the repair seems to have worked. Now everything appears to be working fine, it's time for reassembly. Don't forget to replace the heat transfer paste under the board before putting it back in. Now reassembly is just the reverse of pulling it apart. Just make sure you remember where everything went, that's where the drawings come in handy. And also don't forget the eddy current suppression ring bolted to the side and some fresh sealant when putting the top back on. Now with this motor failure there is a good chance that the fuse on top of the motor controller would have blown as well. As you can see here, we have a temporary fuse from a solar system with the same ratings required to test the system while we're waiting for the OEM fuse from Mitsubishi. Now the fuse is installed, make sure you've got everything reconnected to the DC converter, but most importantly is make sure the coolant is refueled and purged in accordance with the owner's operating manual. Then install the plug in the drive battery isolator switch, reconnect the 12 volt battery and then test everything. And sure enough, the repair worked. The car was charging from AC as it should. The 12 volt battery was charging from the driver battery showing 14.4 volts. And no more errors were showing up on the OBD2 reader. All the lights on the dashboard had gone out. So I hope this video has helped you diagnose and repair your iMove or iMove twin in Europe. But also this couldn't have been done without the help of these guys on the iMove owners forum. Huge wealth of knowledge which we couldn't have done this without their help. So thank you to those guys and also thank you for watching and drive safe. Bye.